we can create meshes like this from textures right inside Unreal Engine. Let me show you how it works. So this is blueprint in the level, and these are just normal 2D images with black background and white lines. And you put a texture in the slot in the blueprint, and it automatically turns texture into mesh. And you can even use it for like props, for example, sword image. Here it is a sword. Uh, you can use it for anything, it's really cool. Uh, you can increase depth and magnitude. Here you go, you have a nice thick heart. <laughs> uh, it's basically amazing, amazing. Uh, so how it works. Uh, let me show you. So it uses dynamic mesh, like new plugin from Epic Games. Uh, so basically you put a normal static mesh, uh, a plane inside of it, and then emboss uh, on that plane the whatever texture you want. So I got these textures from Google. I just googled <coughs> vector clip art. There are a million of them. And uh, after you done embossing, you just cut away initial plane and, he, and, and you'll get this. A nice mesh. Uh, I did like ex experiments with it, so basically you do whatever you can do whatever you want. I like this wall, uh, like fresco or what, I don't know how it's called. Uh, you can see it's like it's geometry, uh, and you put material on it, and it looks really cool. I used um, see this te this texture on it, and it turned it into this. Now you can use any material on the on the mesh, so we can turn it into uh, wooden, for example, wooden uh, heart. Here you go, made of wood. Can use anything. Uh, These are just normal me mega scan assets. Um, I'm just using gold by default. So let me show you how to create this blueprint so you can use it in your own project. It's it's pretty simple actually. So uh, first we go to plugins and search for geometry and geometry script. You have to enable geometry script. Then uh, we create new blueprint and search for dynamic uh, generated dynamic mesh actor. Create a blueprint like this. Open it up. Open event graph. Now we need variables for our initial mesh, uh, source mesh, and for our texture, displace map. So source mesh is static mesh. mesh. And displace map is texture 2D. Uh, now we start with repeat generated mesh. Then we get a source mesh uh, converted to validated get. Copy mesh from static mesh. and connect a source mesh and our dynamic mesh. Our dynamic mesh is this one from initial node. Then we apply tessellation. Then we get displacement map, our image converted to validated get. and apply displacement. Apply displace from texture map. Don't forget to connect nodes.
After that, we recompute normals. And that's it. It should work already. Basic version, at least. So, right. We will need initial plane. Uh, if you don't have it, we can go to modeling mode, select rectangle, make sure we have a current folder enabled here. So it would appear here and click anywhere in the view viewport. Now uh, we go back to select mode. We can delete uh, object in the viewport. We will only need this one. So let's drag our new blueprint into the viewport. And we don't see any slots here. Uh, we need to enable them in the blueprint. So make sure they public here. Compile and save. Now we see our inputs here. So we drag our plane into the source mesh. And we drag any texture into the displace map. Now we don't see any changes yet. Uh, so let's go and increase tessellation level to 100 compile save and here we go already something uh, let's increase mm, let's increase displacement level to for example 9 compile save here we go now we can see rough edges around here uh, otherwise it works properly already, but there are some edges, right? Uh, now to fix these rough edges, we can apply smoothing. Smoothing, iterative smoothing to mesh. Compile and save, and here we go. It's nice and smooth now. Now we need to remove this plane from our new mesh. Now let's apply plane mesh cut. Mm. Connect mesh. Mm. Initially it will cut something, <laughs> not exactly the place you want. Uh, you have to adjust location of the cut. So let's change this to one and see what happens. It goes up, let's change it to minus one, goes down. Right, so we need uh, actually to top to remain while bottom is cut off so we go to options and flip cut size compile here we go let's adjust location even further and even further and even further until we're happy Right. Now it, we go too far. Let's go back. Here it is. We have um, almost a mesh. Now let's turn it into static mesh. Uh, first of all, we duplicate it. Here it is. And we go uh, into modeling mode in the transform category and press convert select static mesh uh, now we should select folder where we want our new mesh to appear i will just select blueprints for now click accept and now we see our new static mesh it is static mesh here too so basically we can so we can do anything we want with it now So here we go, we have our new static mesh, we just generated. 
and we now can generate them very fast using this blueprint we have. So, for example, let's generate another one. Uh, we will generate heart this time. Again, let's uh, duplicate it. Here's a new one. Uh, now we go to modeling mode and convert it. And make sure you open a folder that you want your new mesh to appear to. So I will put in blueprints for now. Click accept. Here it is new mesh. And it's already in the viewport. So now you can do whatever you want with them and just use them as uh, normal static meshes. You can apply materials. We can apply materials, deform them, do whatever we want, right? Great. Also, you can apply material to a dynamic mesh blueprint. So you can see in advance how it's going to look. Now we can adjust parameters. Uh, so make it smoother or uh, give it more depth or give it more definition right so let's go to blueprint and change tessellation level to something bigger for example 300 here we go much better now uh, you can uh, make this, you can turn this into variable and make it public, right? And that way we can now, and that way we can now edit tessellation in the viewport. So 100, 300, here we go. Now let's change depth of the mesh. So we can change it via magnitude option in the displace node. You can change it to three. Compile save. It got smaller, but we can see plane now. To fix this, we need to change a plane cut location. Go to the blueprint uh, and we'll change this uh, location. Uh, should let Let's split it and promote it to variable and we will make it public and and now we can change it in the viewport. Let's experiment a bit. Change it to minus 10. Nothing happens to minus 1. Here we go. Minus 2. Nope, too much. Minus 1. Let's go with minus 1. What happens if we put zero there? Here we go. One. Too much. Let's go with minus one. Now let's make a magnitude also public. Promote it to variable. Make it public. And now we can change parameters in the viewport. So we change magnitude to nine. Uh, to three to five to fifteen all right and again we can adjust settings individually for uh, each mesh so if we need to decrease tessellation we can do that if we need to increase it we can do that it's a bit slow <laughs> uh, now, if we need to decrease magnitude or depth, we can do that. And that's it.
now when we are happy with our new mesh we duplicate it then we go to the modeling mode uh, find convert button make sure we in a folder that we want our mesh to appear click accept and here we go we got new mesh go back to the select mode and now we can do whatever we want with our new mesh.